I thought I would show you how I design a logo. I'm going to talk you through this logo that I made. It's this one here. I made it for my friend Beth and she is a freelance photographer and wanted a nice girly yet professional logo. I actually got Beth to send me a selection of screenshots of logos that she had seen that she liked the look of because that helps me gauge the idea of what my client wants and I kind of combine those ideas into a logo. I've also done a few different videos like this now so I will leave the playlist link on screen and in the description if you want to check out more logos that I've designed and how I go about my life as a graphic designer. Don't forget to subscribe and let's get into it. So this is the email I got from Beth. I noticed she quite liked the look of the circular logos and like nice flowing text, maybe some flowers. It was all very cute and girly but professional as I said. So from these I kind of picked out the ones that drew my attention and that kind of had something in common. So I narrowed it down a little bit and picked the ones that I thought would fit really nicely together. And then what I do is take that into Procreate, which I use on my iPad Pro with the Apple Pencil and I'll do some sketches. So I used to sketch logo ideas on paper, but ever since I've had my iPad, I get to save paper and I like that I can have a JPEG version of my sketches that I can just send straight to my laptop and then trace and copy from there. You'll see what I'm gonna do. So you can see here that I am just sketching out a few different ideas. Initially, I wanted to go with kind of a scroll, calligraphy style of font. I couldn't work out the spacing of it. I was trying to work out whether to do it in a square, in a circle, in an oval. I went back and forth quite a lot and then I found that kind of chopping the circle in half and drawing some flowers worked really nice and actually you'll see that the final logo design isn't even on this sketch because I adapted it as I got into Illustrator. Once I've done in Procreate I will go into Adobe Illustrator so I just save the file out and send it straight to my MacBook. I love the airdrop feature on um, iPads and MacBooks and stuff honestly. I airdrop things to myself at least 10 times every single day. So now I am in Adobe Illustrator with my sketches on the right hand side just for reference. I'm going to pick up a bunch of different styled bees. I just basically went through the text option and looked at all the different styles and then I created outlines so I could adjust them. If you're familiar with Adobe Illustrator, you'll know what Create Outlines is, but if you do want me to do a video on that in a bit more detail and a bit slower, um, let me know and I'll do that for you. Um, but I'm just creating a big letter B and typing around it in a circle, as you can see. So I've just written Beth B Photography around it and I'm playing around with the different placements. Originally, I was gonna try and do just a single B in the middle. Um, I was mirroring a style of uh, logo that Beth sent me by like chopping bits of the letter out but it just looked a bit naff. So you'll see that I played around with this a few times. I ended up adding the background, changing the color, but no matter how many times I looked at it, it was annoying me. So I decided to abandon that idea and go back to a different one. So yeah, I'm just doing the type on path tool, which I do have a tutorial of. So if you want to know how to type around a circle, I can show you that. Um, but yeah, I did that. And then I'm just changing the B's in the middle. So I've lined this B um, and again I was just trying with the single letter but I didn't I don't know it was just it, something looked a bit weird it looked really simple and like I'd not really tried very hard so that is when I decided to start doing um, the full name of Beth B photography on the top and bottom and then the double B so this kind of reflects what I used in my sketches in the beginning. So this is where the create outlines feature became super handy because I wanted to erase just parts of that letter. So as you can see, I'm just deleting the bits that I want to be hidden. Um, I played around with this a lot. Uh, you can see that I spent a lot of time on this one because it was really frustrating me and I couldn't do it. So I kept going back to it, um, having a bit of a break and then revisiting it, which I think is super important because being cooped up in my office all day, stressing about how bad the logo looked, wasn't gonna make it look any better. So I tried to like interlace the bees. So I did a few different ways of doing this. I kind of interlaced them a bit, zoomed out, had a bit of a look, 
undid everything I did and then started again um, and this again took a while for me to kind of find a route that I liked. I then gave up and went back down to the striped bee and <laughs> decided to do a whole different thing. I think that's what's super important about logo designing, it's not just I had an instant idea and made it and it looked fantastic, it's trial and error. I made a bunch of different copies of the logo as you can see and kept playing around with it. Um, and you can see there I'm just erasing the B so it kind of doesn't show behind and I still wasn't happy so here I am getting rid of the fancy serifs on the edge of the front B which I thought looked quite cool this was when I was getting a bit of a breakthrough then I erased the lines with the just eraser tool so it interlaced between the other one. Does that even make sense? I feel like at this point uh, I'm just talking nonsense but if you're still with me congratulations you can deal with my nonsense. <laughs> so yeah I decided to go with this interlaced B. It overlaps just in one spot and it looks really cute. I think it does anyway. Um, and then I filled it in. I ended up painting it in because I don't know why I think I must have lost my mind at this point but when I zoomed out it still looked a bit weird. So I dragged over the copies of the logo that I liked the look of the most, studied them for a long time and then decided that I liked the one on the right hand side. So I'm copying just that one down and editing that as I go. So I wanted to refine this logo and make it look a bit better. I go through this process quite a lot. I will play around with a bunch of different designs and then when I get to one I like, I will refine it and make sure it is perfect, which is what I am doing on screen right now. So once I've got my design that I like the look of, I actually saved it as a PNG file. So it had a transparent background and put it back into Procreate because I wanted to create some kind of floral flourish of some sort and I find it a lot easier to draw stuff like that in Procreate because it is like drawing on a piece of paper. I'm back in Procreate and I am attempting to draw this flower. It took me a few attempts. I couldn't really work out what I wanted to draw but that's what I love about Procreate. I don't need to rub anything out. I can just press the undo button and draw it all over again. I make sure I have the gel pen tool on for this one and I also have upped the streamline settings. I have done a video on Procreate and tips on how I use it so again I'll link that on screen if you want some more information but you can see here that I've done the basic outline I then changed the width of my pen and did some finer details um, and then I was actually really happy with this. It didn't take me long to draw at all which surprised me. Um, I basically duplicated it, flipped it over and then it was ready for the other side of the image. And now it's time to copy the flowers that I drew back into Illustrator. So again I just saved the flowers as PNGs and sent it over to Illustrator. So to make these flowers more clear and scalable I brought it into Illustrator and then created outlines. So I went into object image trace and turned a flat JPEG drawing into a vector. So once I have my vector I'm just getting rid of all the bits I want and now this flower I can scale up and down and it won't get blurry at any point. Um, and then I'm just mirroring it, leveling them up and I have my pretty little flowers. I'm very happy with this. So here you can see I'm just doing the two different versions. So I just changed the text size so it fit together well and made the finished logo. And this is the final logo. I'm super happy with it. I actually ended up doing two different versions of it. We did one that said Beth B Photography and one that said B Barker Photography because Beth couldn't decide which one she wanted. So I just sent her both um, and she can decide that at a later date. But I think it suits really nice. It's something that will look quite nice on uniform, on like social media um, and it's still cute and girly but professional so yeah I'm super happy that Beth asked me to do that logo. It was a nice fun little project. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Hopefully you've learned a few things from it. Let me know if you'd like to see any more like this. Please do subscribe if you did enjoy it and if you got to the end because a lot of you aren't subscribed actually. I think about 70% of the people who watch my videos aren't subscribed. And let me tell you, it's completely free. So just press the little red button, um, click on the bell, and then every time I upload, you will be informed and you can stay up to date with me and my super exciting life. That's not very exciting. <laughs> okay, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon for another video. Bye.